Well, um, good morning and a warm welcome to our 9.30 service here in Chet and wherever you are at home. We're so glad you can join us this morning. Now, for those of you at home and for those of you here, I'm going to just say a bit of a repeat of some of the guidelines we want you to kind of to really um, stick to. So first of all, please, if you're able to arrive at good time, 15 minutes before the service, that would be great. Now, a steward will help you, as you could see, through the door, and then hand sanitizers have to be used on your way in and then also on your way out. Um, social distancing must be observed at all times in church as well as in the churchyard. So if you go outside, it doesn't mean that therefore you're going to have your own rule. It will be two meters distance, please. If for whatever circumstances you're close up, obviously, then face mask would be preferable. And if you have a face mask, please wear them. That will be really great. It's safe for others as well. Um, I would have worn a face mask, but because uh, the bishop recommends that I would speak into and clear, and also for those people who want to lip read, that will be harder. But otherwise, I would have worn one as well. Um, toilet facilities are not available. Um, if there is an emergency, please make yourself known to the stewards at the back and they will be able to help you. Now, if you come in the future with a minor and under 12, they need to have close supervision as well. Now, um, at the end of the service, we will go in reverse order. So the way you have come in, the first will be last and the last will be first. Um, and also for those of you, to just to let you know that the areas will be cleaned, the church will be cleaned after the service as well, especially the seats where if you've been sitting on, so that other people who come feel safe as well to come to church. Angela is going to share an opening prayer, but before I ask her to do that, it is also an exciting day. Although we are very restrictive in the way we do worship, we are open, and that is something to celebrate. We also have been praying since noon yesterday, people have been praying, and I thought personally that three o'clock at night will be the hardest slot to cover. Three, four, five people were praying at three o'clock this night. What an amazing event. 24 hours of prayer until the end of the 11 o'clock service to 12 o'clock. We have been 24 hours praying here and in our homes. And thank you so much for joining in. It's such an exciting thing to do. Uh, our Lord prays. More than 24 hours, he plays constantly. At the right hand of the Father, he's interceding for you and me. And so it's such a privilege and an honor to be invited to join him in, with him in prayer. And so thank you so much for doing that. Angela, would you share an opening prayer? Good morning, everyone. And what a pleasure it is to see you all here today. A very warm welcome also to those who are tuning in at home or wherever you might be on your way. The psalmist in Psalm 44 tells us this. Declare God's praise before the nations. Exalt him in the sight of the living because he is our Lord and God and our Father forever. And so let us pray, Abba, our Father. We come into your holy presence this morning to worship you. We place our burdens, our fears, our anxieties and our longings at your feet. We seek only the comfort of your presence, the mystery of your presence, the peace of your presence. In your grace, Lord, in your presence, Lord, we are still. Amen.
A reading from Joshua, verses 14 to 18. Now fear the Lord and serve him with all faithfulness. Throw away the gods your ancestors worshipped beyond the Euphrates River and in Egypt and serve the Lord. But if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, then choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve. Whether the gods your ancestors served beyond the Euphrates or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Then the people answered, Far be it from us to forsake the Lord, to serve other gods. It was the Lord our God himself who brought us and our parents up out of Egypt, from that land of slavery, and performed those great signs before our eyes. He protected us on our entire journey and among all the nations through which we travelled. And the Lord drove out before us all the nations, including the Amorites, who lived in the land. We too will serve the Lord, because he is our God. This is the word of the Lord. The Bible's an important book, but it's really long. Yeah, it's a collection of many books written over a long period of time, but altogether they tell one unified story. So, what's the story of the Bible? Well, it begins by introducing us to a beautiful mind, the author of all reality, a being called God. And he has the power to take the dark chaos of the uncreated world and bring about order and beauty and a garden full of life. And to crown this accomplishment, God appoints these creatures called humanity. Or in Hebrew, Adam. And they're made as God's image. Which means that they're commissioned to rule this beautiful world on God's behalf by harnessing all of its potential and creating even more beauty and order. This is a story about humans using their power to do meaningful, life-giving work. But the question is, how? Yeah, humanity now faces a choice that's represented by a fruit tree. So humans could partner with God and find freedom by trusting in his knowledge of good and evil. Or they could seize power and define good and evil on their own, which, God warns, will kill them. And they hear the voice of a dark, mysterious creature that tells them the choice is simple. Take the fruit. It'll give you power and freedom to rule the world on your own terms. And so they seize this knowledge, and as a result, they become suspicious and self-protective. It leads to fractured relationships, violent power grabs, and ultimately, a whole civilization, Babylon, that has redefined evil as good. And so, God scatters this corrupted human project. And here the story of the Bible takes an important turn. We zoom in to the story of a man and a woman who come out of Babylon, Abraham and Sarah. Yeah, God promises that from them will come a new people, a nation that has another chance to make the right choice. And if they succeed, it will open up this new way forward for the rest of humanity. And this is why the rest of the Bible story is about this family. And it does not go well. Despite God's personal guidance, Abraham's family gives in to that same temptation to redefine good and evil on their own terms, apart from God. Even when their best people were in charge, rulers who loved God's guidance and had divine wisdom, even they gave in. And so Israel was warned by their own prophets that these choices would lead them back to Babylon, this time as conquered captives living in exile, and that's exactly what happened. So even with God's personal guidance, Israel fails. Who can succeed? Well, the prophet said that the story wasn't over. God's going to send a new leader to Israel to cover for their failures and to transform the people's hearts and minds so that they can make the right choice. And so the part of the Bible called the Old Testament ends, and these promises are left hanging. 
And then the biblical story continues into the New Testament. We're introduced to a man who comes from the line of Israel's kings, Jesus of Nazareth. And he said that he was bringing all these promises to their completion. He confronted that dark, mysterious evil that all humanity has given into and resisted its power. And then he announced that God had arrived to rule the world through himself. Jesus taught about God's definition of good and evil, and he said that real power is serving others. According to Jesus, it's people who love the poor and even love their enemies. These are the kinds of people who actually rule the world. And that's confusing, but also really beautiful. And so is the claim that the story goes on to make about Jesus, that he is God become human, to be for Israel and for all humanity what we could never be for ourselves. He came to take the consequences of our evil into himself, and his sacrificial love proved more powerful than evil, than even death itself. So now humanity's presented with a new choice. Represented by a new tree. Stick with the old way of being human, or venture into this new way. And in the story, those who choose the way of Jesus find themselves energized by God's own power. People who know that they are loved and forgiven by God can become people who love and forgive others in return. The Jesus movement quickly spread throughout the world, forming these new communities of people who follow the way of Jesus. But they faced problems. There was persecution from the outside by people in power, and inside there was confusion, mm. even compromise. Yeah, because following Jesus is really hard. And so the movement's leaders, called apostles, they wrote letters to comfort and to challenge these communities to stay faithful to the difficult way of Jesus. And they're called to hope for the day when Jesus will come and change everything. And so the Bible ends by pointing to the future day when all wrongs are made right, when evil is eradicated, heaven and earth are united, and humanity can rule the world together in the love and power of God. Okay, so that's the story of the Bible, and it brings all of these books together. But what's interesting is that each book contains a different kind of literature that contributes to this story in a unique way, and that's what the next video will begin to explore. Well, the next video will not be yet, that will be next week. But I'm going to say something in relation to that choice between one way or the other way. Because life really, uh, especially when we become a grown-up adult, is about choices. And, uh, and what is the right choice? And sometimes we're really struggling making the right choice, isn't it? So take for example, when we were forced to go into lockdown, that was not any of our choice. But we all were unified into that choice. And there was a bit of a unity as well in our country. We were having the weekly clap. But when we go out of lockdown, we suddenly get disunity. Some people who can't go out of lockdown, some people who can, some people who can't come to church, some of you who can. Some of you where family members say, no, actually, I want to have a party. I understand, well, actually, that's not allowed. And then you get all these kind of comments. And then let there be no mistake about this, that the coronavirus is an evil. It's not what we want. It's not a blessing. It might be silver linings, but far is it a blessing. It really isn't. And the thing that I would love most is to shake your hands, and what you'll probably need is a hug. And those things we are deprived from. Now, what are the choices? What are we doing next as church? How can we go further? Well, we can look back also at the scripture, at the ancient story of Joshua. Joshua is the new leader. And if you did not know this, the word Joshua means Jesus, because it's the same name. It's Hebrew for Yeshua. And, and Yeshua is how Jesus probably was called by his mom and dad. And uh, Joshua is the new leader. He's the one who survives the 40 years. Most of them didn't. We have one other one, Caleb. Even Moses didn't survive the journey in the desert. Many of them were unfaithful and they did not enter the promised land. And here is a new people group and they listen to their leader, Joshua. And Joshua is saying to them, uh, are you up for this? Are you up for the God who saved you out of slavery? And they say, yes, we definitely want to be. We really want to go and choose him. And they, uh, they really affirm this. To Joshua, because Joshua is saying, I'm going to serve him with my house. Again, it's a choice. And as you can see in the film where the cross was, 
there is still this choice to make. Joshua was the leader. He was leading them into the promised land. And I can tell you, Jesus, our Lord, is our leader. And he's calling you to follow us. He's leading us into the new kingdom, the promised land. He went also for a 40-day desert journey. And he was faithful. Faithful in everything. And so the question to us is, are we wholeheartedly following him? Now, does that mean that everything will go well and plain sailing? No, far from it. Even our global situation is not plain sailing. But still, choices to be made. And I am, as I mentioned at the beginning of the service, so excited of the choices that have been made here in this community. And I really am. I mentioned how many people started praying. I think more than a third of our average regular people who come to this community signed up and prayed, including those who didn't even sign up and prayed. That is a large percentage because normally it's much smaller in average churches. If you go to a prayer meeting in a church and they organize a prayer meeting, you will be lucky if 10% of the people turn up. And people want to choose for God. And I hope that wherever you are, you are reflecting on this, saying, actually, what am I going to choose in the days to come? How am I going to serve? And some people might say, well, actually, this, this time has been a time of reflection. But for some, it has not been. It has been a time of stress and a time of busyness. But nevertheless, the Lord is there to say to you, choose today, choose me. I'm here for you. I'm not against you. I will help you through that journey. And that journey is a journey of struggling because when Jesus says, I am the way and the truth and the life, well, what was the way of Christ? <clears throat> well, the way of Christ was not just victory. <clears throat> the way of Christ was a difficult way. And so sometimes we will go through those valleys, those dark valleys. But there is an ending to it. Jesus has already won. The victory is already there. It's just a journey that we have to get through, but he already offers that new life. And so Joshua here, in his old scripture, is a foreshadow of what will happen in the future and what did happen in Jesus. He is the new promised leader who leads us through our journey. Our journey of difficulty, our journey of trouble, and it's not going to be easy, but it's going to be worthwhile, because the end is going to be glorious. Amen. Now you might say that as a person you feel that you have lost that connection with God, perhaps lost that connection with Jesus, and there is ways to return back to him. Do you know when the people of Israel said to Joshua, we go, we'll follow you, they felt miserably. And God offers forgiveness again and again. And that's what we're going to do as a community now. We're going to say a confession, and the words will be on the screen. And if you see the words in bold, you can say with me. You raised the dead to life in the Spirit. Lord have, mercy. Lord, have mercy. You bring pardon and peace to the broken in heart. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. And you make one by your spirit, the torn and divided. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may the God of love and power Forgive and free us from our sins and heal and strengthen us by his spirit and raise us to new life in Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Now, through the ages, the church, 2,000 years ago, a bit less, has saying these words of this particular creed. I know them by heart in my own mother tongue and, and you might know them already by heart if you don't feel free to say the words on the screen. We're going to say the Apostles' Creed together. 
And if you want to stand, you're able to. So please feel free to stand. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered on the Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again and ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit. I believe in the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints. If you click on the next one then. And the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please do take a seat. As a mother comforts her children, so I will comfort you. Words from the prophet Isaiah. In a spirit of humility and reverence, let us turn to our Father, who is ever eager to hear us when we pray. Abba, Father, we ask for your healing touch on all those suffering from the coronavirus and for protection on those who at present are in good health. We pray that you will comfort the dying and console all those who mourn loved ones snatched away by an untimely death. Lord, we pray that your abounding wisdom and compassion will guide leaders across the world to forge a better and more equal society. Disdaining the presumptions of high office, may they collaborate respectfully with experts in other disciplines to solve the immediate challenges, both medical and economic. And on this day, we honour and give thanks for the National Health Service as it celebrates its 72nd birthday. A blessing on each and every one who works in this extraordinary institution. We pray now for those in prison, isolated, lonely, or in despair, that they might experience your loving kindness, Lord, your forgiveness, and your deep compassion. In all humility, May we be ever mindful of our own mistakes and our tendency to blame others rather than assume responsibility ourselves. Lord, 
Lord, we acknowledge with shame and ignorance racism in our society, a scourge on all humanity. May we be ever open to the value of difference in others and eager to celebrate their richness, their dignity, their inherent goodness and the unique contribution they make in building your kingdom amongst us all. Lord, we pray that you will use this pandemic to pave the way for spiritual renewal throughout the world. In trust, we wait upon you that your glory, your power, your healing will be revealed to all nations and for all time. We pray these prayers in the name of our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ and through the power of his Holy Spirit. Amen. We thank you for joining us this morning and hope that you have enjoyed our worship and found something of God's grace to carry you through the coming week. Let us close our service with a blessing. May the goodness of God the Father go with us May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ protect us. And may the guidance of the Holy Spirit leave us safely 
on our journey, wherever we may be, this week. Amen.